Hello and welcome to Mr Morton's science videos. I'm Mr Morton and this week we're looking at GCSE chemistry class paper questions. As always the paper that we're looking at is going to be linked in the description below uh, so you can have a go yourselves. This paper is AQA Chemistry Unit 1 from June 2013 and we're looking at question 4. This question is all about alloys and polymers. Question 4. The diagram shows a ballpoint pen. We've got a normal biro here with a cap the outer casing, the tube for the ink, the ball, and the comb made out of a nickel alloy. For part A, give one advantage and one disadvantage of recycling the materials from this type of ballpoint pen. Now remember, in order to answer this question, you need one advantage and one disadvantage. For two marks, that's going to be a mark each. Okay, so advantages that we can have. When you're recycling things, we're going to be using less resources. And that's going to save us things like crude oil. Uh, by recycling, we could also um, save the amount of uh, waste that goes into landfill, so use less landfill. Either of those will get you the muck. Okay, negatives we could have. Um, well, we've got one, two, three, four, five different parts of this pen, so it will take a lot of time. in order to, for, for us to separate those pieces and to be honest for a 10 20 pence pen it will take more money in terms of time than you would actually get from recycling it okay question 4b alloys are used to make the ballpoint pen now, alloys remember are a mixture of two or more metals or a metal and carbon Give two reasons why alloys are used in the ballpoint pen. Now they're used in the nib of the pen. If we look back at the diagram here, there's a stainless steel, steel being an alloy, and a nickel alloy cone. So the reason the stainless steel is used is because it's strong. Which means it will last longer, so it's durable. And the reason the uh, nickel is used is because it doesn't rust, because if your pen rusts from the ink, you won't be able to use it. So it's resistant to corrosion. Okay, both of those will get you a mark. For C, decane, that's an alkane. Uh, an alkane meaning that it doesn't have any uh, double bonds between the carbons. C10H22 can be used to produce polyethene. Polyethene is a polymer, um, which is what we call plastic. Polyethene is the plastic that you find in plastic bags. Uh, you find lots of different things. Probably one of the most widely used plastics. So decane, dec meaning 10 carbons. So decane, C10H22 is reacted to make octane, C8H18, and ethene, C2H4. And the reason that's ethene is because it's got a double bond there. Describe the conditions needed for reaction one. In order to get from decane to octane, this reaction is called cracking. And for cracking, we're going to need a catalyst. And it will only work if the decane itself is vaporized. That means it's a gas. Okay, and that will get us those two marks. For, uh, 4C part 2. Describe in terms of molecules how polyethene, that's the plastic here, is produced in reaction 2. Now when we take something like ethene and make polyethene, that's a reaction called polymerization. Polymerization uh, is when we take the small monomers, so ethene here is a monomer, think of a, a paper clip, and we put lots of them together into a long chain to make a polymer. Polymer meaning many. So that could be your paperclip chain. So the way that happens is we take lots of the monomer, which is ethene, and bond them together into a very long chain.
that very long chain is the one mark and then the bonding together lots of the little ones is the other mark. Okay, 4D. Complete the display structure of the product in the equation. Now here we've got styrene. You won't have encountered styrene before, but it is just another monomer. And we've got polystyrene. Poly meaning many. So this is your polymer, your plastic. Polystyrene you will have encountered all over the place. We use it in cups. Uh, we use it in packaging. So the first thing that's going to happen in polymerization is this double bond here is going to break. So instead of a double bond, we're going to have a single bond between the two carbons. Okay, you're still going to have the hydrogen at the top, and another hydrogen here, you're still going to have the hydrogen here, and you're still going to have this C6H5 group here. What's going to change, instead of this double bond, you're going to have bonds that form a chain. And we, the way we represent this, we'll put them in brackets to show that they're repeated throughout the chain and we've got an n over here so this will be repeated n times and that will get us our two marks okay thank you for watching this video hopefully you've learned something today um, check out some of the other videos you've got on the channel and i'll see you next time on question five